we're now pleased to be joined by Ohio Representative Warren Davidson. He is a member of the House Committee on Financial Services. Uh, Representative, thank you so very much for joining us this morning. Uh, I want to know, what are you really hoping to learn from this week's hearing tomorrow? Yeah, good morning, Baker. Thanks for covering it. And I'm excited that Congress is doing this hearing. And frankly, it's one of the few times that financial services seems to have captivated, you know, just a broad cross section of the country. So, uh, you know, look, Reddit, as you alluded to, kind of broke the market. And there were people that spoke to me that were just excited to be part of it. I talked to uh, a dozen people or so that said, yeah, I bought one share just to be part of it. And part of that was just the kind of schadenfreude of sticking it to Wall Street. Um, and and uh, that, that was kind of near the end. And that's when uh, the piling on effect of the short squeeze, um, you know, came to, you know, create the, the drama that everyone's covering right now. Yeah, and of course, we see the witnesses that are scheduled to appear. We have the CEO of Robinhood. We have uh, representatives from Reddit, other individuals as well. Are you coming into this hearing uh, assuming that Robinhood is guilty of limiting the purchasing here, of wrongdoing for limiting the purchasing and all of this, or are you expecting some uh, some evidence here that might change your perspective on this? Well, I think we've done enough research to understand what happened, uh, but it is always good to uh, highlight that so that it's, it's more broadly understood. I mean, re the reality is Robinhood was confronted with uh, undercapitalization for the amount of trading. And part of this comes with the way that settlement happens. So, you know, when you purchase shares, you really don't possess the shares immediately, even though it re is reflected in your account, um, you, you have a claim on the shares. So that's uh, trading day plus two days now. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the pieces of legislation we're working on would take it from T2 to T0 so that everything's settled same day. Um, that changes a little bit about it, but the other piece uh, goes to you know claims on shares. So when you have uh, the settlement period because of uncertainty about the competing claims for the same shares, um, you know that's part of why the clearinghouse is in there. So one witness I wish that was going to be there was DTCC, which is the you know the the clearinghouse that settles these trades. Yeah, are we expecting potential tangible reforms to come from this hearing? Are we expecting most of those reforms to be aimed at Robin Hood? Or do you think potentially we might have reforms levied at a company like Reddit in all of this? You know, it's interesting to, um, to ponder. I mean, on balance, Congress is pretty good at preserving the status quo, uh, which is a polite way of saying we usually don't get a lot done. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, the last time we had this kind of enthusiasm, on Capitol Hill for financial services when Facebook was launching uh, Libra or proposing to launch Libra, a cryptocurrency. And unfortunately, that didn't generate enough enthusiasm to get the legislation that many of us have been working on for, for years uh, across the finish line. And so the status quo of inaction has held. So I hope this one turns out different. Um, and the, the interest isn't just kind of top level posturing, but really digging into the weeds as what is going on here. And, and yet a situation where, you know, if, if uncorrected, um, this could happen again. And, and so you see as technologies evolved, you know, the retail consumer can participate in a way. You're going to see things, I think, called payment for order flow. Some will characterize that accurately. Some will mischaracterize it. But it's part of how a Robinhood user can execute trades at no cost to the user. Um, people make, make money off of the trade. Uh, the order flow, and they, they compete to execute that. So we'll look at some of the market structure that's in place. And my view is we can make that market more, um, you know, resilient with uh, matching it to technology. Uh, I'm, I'm biased sort of towards blockchain. I don't know that we should be proscriptive in terms of how to do it. But my hope is that we get to T0 and we make it so that there, there is a, a clear custody so that there can't be multiple claims on the same shares. The other person or the other entity involved, unfortunately, in all of this is GameStop. When we talked to Chairwoman Maxine Waters a few weeks ago, she essentially insinuated that she wants representatives from GameStop to come and testify at this hearing tomorrow. I, I, I guess my question is, uh, why? Because uh, they seem like they're the innocent bystander in all of this. And, and is GameStop planning to to be represented tomorrow? You know, it's a good question. And I think one of the uh, real pieces here is in the market dynamics. You know, this is one of the most shorted stocks in history, right? So at one point, 138 percent of the shares were shorted. Obviously, at the same moment, you can't deliver 138 percent of the shares. 
And this is where, you know, the, the Reddit thread users, Wall Street Bets users, uh, started going, you know, these guys are way out of their position. So there are people that were talking about a positive case for, for GameStop. Um, but obviously the short sellers are the people that believe in the negative case for GameStop. And so they're always – they get the fact that they make the big bet – gets coverage and they talk down the future of GameStop. Obviously the management team at GameStop believed in the future and wanted to turn it around and had recently added, you know, a great member to the board, uh, a new CEO. And, and initially there was an optimistic case that was just kind of on the fundamental analysis. But as the pylon happened and you saw how far overextended Melbourne Capital and others were in the short position, there was just this effect of being able to execute a short squeeze. So, you know, GameStop really is in the middle, but the real case is what is the optimistic case for GameStop? Here's a great chance for GameStop to make their case as to why there's a positive case for the company in a future versus, you know, the narrative that the short sellers were pitching, which is, you know, they're, they're, they're dead, just a matter of timing. And, and they were trying to implement that. Often that's what some of the frustration with the short markets on Wall Street are is they literally kill companies and then scoop in and buy up the pieces at pennies on the dollar. Um, what is it about this issue? It seems like we finally maybe have found the issue that there's some sort of bipartisan consensus for the first time ever when it comes to this particular issue. What I mentioned we've talked to Maxine Waters. We've also talked to ranking member Patrick McHenry as well, and they have echoed a lot of the same things. What is it about this issue that Republicans and Democrats seem to have found some sort of bipartisan consensus on? Well, I, I was really encouraged. I mean, obviously, early on, you had Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez uh, agreeing, uh, or Ted Cruz agreeing with uh, Congresswoman Cortez. So, you know, that's not a common thing. Uh, unfortunately, the subject changed briefly, but the real piece is, I think, democratic access to capital, right? So the Main Street investor has access to, um, you know, an investment platform and this is a great thing if we can make it possible, because the reality is due to uh, paternalistic policies from the federal government, um, you know, your regular ordinary investors locked out of a lot of deal flow. And, and frankly, the, the, there's frustration on the conservative end and on the, on the uh, more progressive end that, that the status quo really protects deal flow for donors. And, and conservatives and, and progressives are really trying to change that status quo. And here's something we agree is Main Street investors should be able to participate in these things. Uh, you certainly want to make sure that they fully know what they're signing up for. Uh, there were, unfortunately, some people who, who had margin accounts who apparently didn't realize that could mean there would be subject to margin calls. Um, so, you know, informed consent might come up in the hearing, and I think that merits it. But I hope it doesn't forestall a, a broadening of access to the markets by regular people, uh, including students. Absolutely. And just, again, so many unanswered questions that we still even have from when the scandal or not the scandal, but when the situation happened just a few weeks ago. Uh, can't wait to watch what happens tomorrow. Representative Warren Davidson, member of the House Committee on Financial Services. And of course, be sure to watch Cheddar tomorrow for live coverage of the GameStop hearing. Tomorrow starts at 12 noon Eastern time right here on Cheddar.